Good morning. Happy Friday to you. Welcome into My Sweet Home Living. My name is Tracy Campbell. So excited to be here with you today. You know what? It's a special day over in the Craft on the Clock group, and this is a special segment for Craft on the Clock today, all for cocoa, well, sorry, back at coffee and cocoa thing day. And you all know how much I love using coffee in my crafts. So I thought today would be the perfect day for us to have sort of a Coffee Grinch 101 session <laughs> and bring you all along as I make some mini grow jars, which is are using, I will be using the little baby food jars. These are baby food jars from when my babies were babies. <laughs> we're talking like 17, 16, 15 years ago. So, um, I have harbored, I have uh, hung on to these jars for that long, you guys. Can you believe that? <laughs> so we're using up some of those jars that we've been hanging on to for quite some time. And uh, I'm also going to be taking you along. We're doing a whole coffee session today on how I use coffee, how I prep fabric, how I bake my fabric, how I grunge it, how I stain it. And then at the end, we'll tie it all in together, and I'll show you how to make one of those mini grub jars. How about that? Good morning, Miss Marie. Good morning, Lori. Hey, Miss Deborah, how are you from Splash of Paint? Welcome in today, guys. I feel a little rusty. I just have been a little bit out of the crafting loop, and so um, it's kind of weird. It's kind of weird, like when you get out of doing something for a little bit, it just kind of takes you a little bit to kind of get your your mindset back in the game, but I am here and so excited to be with you all today, and I hope that I can share some information with you. This would be the perfect time if you have questions on coffee staining, coffee grunging, how to, um, you know, what to do with your fabric, what temperature to bake it at. You know, sometimes we talk about baking fabric, and, and uh, I know many of you may be scratching your head thinking, baking fabric? Are you serious? <laughs> But yes, we bake the fabric, and so I'll kind of walk you through that process and um, tell you why <laughs> a lot of crafters bake their fabric and whatnot. So it's just a good session today, uh, and even if you already do this, and, and maybe you could shed some insight on things that you do, because I know not everyone does it the same, probably. You may have some tips and tricks to share, and if so, you can be sure to share those down below. We are wel welcome that. Uh, good morning, Miss Melanie. Good morning, Pammy. How are you? Good morning. It's a beautiful sunny day. In fact, you can see like the sun beaming in my kitchen window this morning. It's so nice. It's so beautiful here in Kentucky. I hope it's beautiful where you are today and that you are enjoying some fall weather. Good morning, Elizabeth from Alabama. Looking forward to it, Barb. Good, because I know we've had lots of... Um, Lots of followers asking questions over in the Craft on the Clock group all about using coffee and, and on their fabric and in their crafts and things like that. And I use coffee, but when I say I use coffee, I use instant coffee crystals, okay? Now, these this is just from the dollar store, the Dollar General, and it's instant coffee. Anytime I use, but I'm saying I'm using coffee, that's what I mean. It's instant coffee. Um, so that's what we, that's what we typically use. Now, if you want to use brewed coffee, you definitely can. You probably won't get the intensity of the color if you do so. Um, so instant coffee is what we use and go cheap. You don't have to get anything expensive at all. Cheap of the cheap. <laughs> it all works fine. So don't go out and spend a whole lot of money. So real quick, I'm going to show you how I mix together a batch of coffee grunge, okay? And I just do so with using a jar, any kind of jar. Now, sometimes I double the recipe. Sometimes I even triple it. And uh, sometimes I don't even, I don't even measure it. I just dump. And I'll kind of tell you when and why and where <laughs> I use that kind of method here in a little bit. But for coffee grunge, coffee grunge is the mixture that you see me use a lot of times on my crafts, and I just keep it in a jar, and I store it in my refrigerator when I'm not using it. But it is a mixture of coffee, instant coffee, water, cinnamon, and vanilla. Okay, that's my basic coffee grunge. Now, um, the measurements and everything like that, I'll be glad to give you that, but it's also pinned 
at the top of my Sweet Home Living's Facebook page. If you go to my page, you will see one of the very first photos that you see at the top of my page will be the recipe. It's a little graphic that has the recipe on there, okay? But if you have a pencil and paper ready, I can go ahead and give it to you, or you can replay this and catch it later. It's a cup of hot water, a half a cup of instant coffee, two tablespoons of cinnamon, go cheap, and two tablespoons of instant vanilla, okay? Imitation vanilla, fake, okay? That's all there is to it. Mix it together, all right? Use it on anything you want. You can use it on fabric. You can use it on wood. You can use it on paper. Uh, I'm trying to think of some of the crazy things I've used it on. I've used it on ribbons and lace and... Um, Goodness, I can't even think of everything I've used it on. But it's uh, you can always try it on anything. It's not going to hurt anything. It does not dry sticky. It does not attract insects. In fact, cinnamon is a natural insect repellent. So there you go. <laughs> what it will give you is a wonderful aged color tone, okay, uh, like staining, all right? And it will also give you an amazing smell, an amazing soft fragrant cinnamon coffee vanilla fragrance. It's not super strong. In fact, it will fade over time. So if you use it on things and you wish to keep the scent around, sometimes you might want to apply a new coat to it, you know, a couple of months after you've created something. Okay. And I also mix that in with, sometimes mix it in with my paints to get sort of a different color combination. Um, battery candles, you would want to use the grubby technique that I'm gonna show you on the jars in a little bit for candles if you wanna do that, okay? Um, and like I said, the sky's the limit when it comes to that, okay? That's your basic starting point. Uh, you always like the coffee grinch and it smells like old memories. Oh, I love that. How sweet is that? Uh, that warms my heart. Good morning, Miss Nadia. How are you? So let's mix this together real quick. I'm going to mix together just a basic batch of this, okay? And I'm just going to start with, a, with a, a canning jar, okay? You can put it in whatever you want. You can put it in a, you know, a gallon pitcher if you want to make a big batch. You can uh, mix it together in a big pot on the stove, a crock pot, or whatever. Depends on how much you're going to be using. So what I have done, I've just taken my measuring cup and put it under my Keurig. Okay, how many of you have a Keurig? <laughs> I made my co my husband's coffee this morning. I left the K-cup in there, and all I did was just run some water and filled up my measuring cup, but you don't even have to do that. Just use hot water, and you're fine. Okay, so I have two cups here. I'm going to probably... I'm thinking, should I double my, I think I'm going to double my, my recipe today for, for this because I'm needing a little bit more than what I have right here in the next couple of weeks. Okay. So I'm just going to go ahead and make a big batch. So I'm going to put in two cups of hot water. Now this has just a little bit of coffee in it, but not much. Okay. And then I'm going to need, since I'm doubling this recipe, I'm going to need a full cup of instant coffee. So I say, hopefully we have, have enough in there. And yes, we will make a mess, <laughs> but that's okay. That is okay. So in a re regular recipe batch, it calls for a half a cup of instant coffee. So I'm going to use a full cup since I'm doubling it. And you can darken if you use this on something and it's not quite as dark as you want you have two options. You can darken your solution or you can let your fabric soak longer, you know, repeat the soaking process and that will also deepen your color. Okay, now let me clear off my little mess right here because we're gonna have a lot going on today. So I'm gonna make sure I kind of clean as I go. Okay, so far easy peasy, right? Instant coffee and hot water in there. Now, I'm going to go ahead and I need two tablespoons of cinnamon. And like I said, go cheap. You don't want anything expensive here. So, since I'm doubling this, I'm probably going to, I'm going to need four tablespoons, which is probably going to be my whole jar, but my whole little bottle here. Two, three, that wasn't quite a full three, but we'll see. We'll add a little extra 
to go on there. There we go. Now, I will tell you, uh, well, I'll tell you this in a little bit. When using the cinnamon, you can leave that out if you want. I know some people may be allergic to cinnamon. Um, and cinnamon will also, cinnamon does not dissolve. So uh, if you're putting it on fabric, I don't ever put cinnamon in my mixture when I'm staining my, my uh, cheesecloth, but I do use it on things like fabric, okay? Now, the cinnamon does not dissolve. You made a fresh batch last night, Pat. That's awesome. Um, but it does not dissolve. And so it leaves a texture and it does stay on there. Now, I will say that it can kind of fall off and leave, you know, a little powdery residue behind. So keep that in mind. Some people, you know, that may bother. Some people may not. Um, for, I don't have a real problem with it. Um, in fact, I mean, I'll see a little bit of a dusting. Like if I'm using this, I'll see a little dusting of it fall off. All I do is just clean it up. But, you know, once I get it on whatever I'm putting it on, I set it and it, it doesn't fall off. Okay. Uh, thank you, Miss Susan. Um, and then let's add the vanilla, which is the same as the cinnamon. Um and since I'm doubling this, I'm going to use four tablespoons. And sometimes I add a little extra. <laughs> sometimes. Just depends on what we're feeling and what I got left in the bottle. You know how that goes, right? Um, I will also send the um, coffee grunge recipe to you if you're on my Telegram channel. So if you're on my Telegram channel... Let me pop that up there. Um, there we go. Oop. Stay on there. There we go. Um, my Telegram channel, I will send that to you um, after we're finished today so that you can save it. You can save it as an image, like a photo to your phone or whatever. Um, but I'm just going to give it a shake and it'll all dissolve and then it's ready to use. Okay. Now you don't want to put this straight in your fridge, obviously when it's hot. So if you're not going to use this right away, let it sit on the counter until it cools to room temperature and then put it in your refrigerator. All right. So, um, it just mixes up. It'll get a little foamy. Okay. Nothing to be alarmed. You haven't done anything wrong. Okay. Now I wanted to uh, show you this. This is my jar that I took straight let me get this out of the way because I'm going to make a mess. Uh, this, I took this straight out of my fridge. Okay. Straight out of my fridge. It's been sitting in there for about a week without me using it. Okay. Um, yes, you can put in exclamation mark telegram all together, no spaces, and it will send you, it will comment back to you. It will reply back to you and give you the link to the telegram too. So thank you for reminding me. So I pulled this out of the fridge. Now, I don't know if you can see this. Do you see the sediment that's at the bottom? That's the cinnamon that has settled down to the bottom, you guys. It's okay, because like I told you, cinnamon does not dissolve. It's actually a bark <laughs> that's been sort of like ground to powder form. So it does not dissolve. So you would not want to dump this down your drain, okay? Uh, a lot of times what I'll do is if I, if I have a batch that I need to throw out, which very rarely happens, I go pour it outside in the yard or I just slowly pour out the liquid where it leaves the cinnamon sediment at the bottom. And then I rake this part, this cinnamon part out into the trash after I've poured the, this liquid in the drain. Okay. Uh, but most of the time you won't have to worry about that. So if you pull it out of your fridge and it looks like this, don't be alarmed. See, you can see that cinnamon starting to move around. So what you'll want to do is give it a good shake. Put it in the microwave. Take the lid off, of course, especially if you have a metal, <laughs> a metal lid. You want to take that off, of course. Give it a good shake. Pop it in the microwave for, you know, a 30 seconds, a minute, whatever. Okay. And you're ready to use it. Now, I want to show you something because I get this question a lot. Um, my, my coffee grunge is like slime. What did I do wrong? <laughs> you didn't do anything wrong it will it will get that consistency someone has been following for 1269 days that's awesome and it won't show me who uh miss sherry you're so awesome i appreciate you sweet lady um yeah you can put exclamation mark followage if you're watching here on facebook if you're watching the replay on youtube those little commands don't work on youtube so <laughs> but you can type that in it'll tell you how long you've been following okay so let me see if I can show you. 
Okay, yeah, this will be perfect. Now, it, it does see like it gets foamy on the top. Um, let me, I'm just dipping my sponge down in here. Now, do you see what's coming on my sponge? <laughs> um, some people would like be freaked out like that, you know, be like, oh my gosh, that's disgusting because it's kind of slumped. Oh, if I could get a big, oh, see right there, right there. That's what it looks like. <laughs> it gets goopy. That is a, it's a wonderful component. It's, it's, um, characteristic of that coffee grunge because it's like a slime. Um, it's kind of the interaction between the cinnamon and the coffee. It gives you that slime, that grudge, grunge, <laughs> right? And it helps it adhere to the surface that you're applying it to. So you didn't do anything wrong. That's what you need, <laughs> right? It's the yumminess to the grunge. All right. Now, Although this smells amazing enough to drink and eat, it's definitely not um, for, for intake <laughs> purposes. It's only for crafting. <laughs> All right. So there, you got the, the, the quick rundown of just a basic coffee grunge. All right. Uh, thank you, Miss Yvonne. Thank you so much for sprinkling this out. I so appreciate that. Okay. Now, let's skip ahead. And I'm going to show you what I do. Sometimes when I'm doing like some coffee staining or prepping, I do it in batches because, you know, when we're doing crafting, I don't want to have to stop and coffee stain each little individual piece of, of what, you know, fabric or, or whatever. I like to um, have things kind of already prepared. And so what I'll do is if I have some fabric that I like to use a lot, um, what I'll do is I'll just tear some strips or... Uh, make some shapes, cutouts, or whatever. Whatever I'm going to need, I kind of like to do that in advance and have them, have them ready. And I'll kind of show you how I store them and everything like that. But for real quick, I'm going to show you. I'm just going to um, cut a piece of this fabric. Now, this is just like a basic gingham, okay? Now, a lot of times you'll see crafters, they tear or rip their fabric. That's just to get the tattered, worn edges, okay? you If you don't like that look, you can definitely cut it. Just a clean cut. It's totally up to you. But for primitive and rustic style, we kind of like that raveled edge, that tattered look. So that's why we tear them a lot of times. It's totally up to you. If you're new to this, all you do is make a little slit on the edge of your fabric, and then you just tear all the way down, <laughs> okay? Now you can see, I can use this for a, a rag ribbon, a rag bow. Uh, I could use this for little tags. I could cut it down, make some little tags. I can make this even for some labels. You could use this in junk journaling, all kinds of things, okay? So what I do is I'll just tear a variety of different thicknesses, okay? Widths, lengths um, of a bunch of different fab fabric choices, okay? And once I get them all ripped and torn, what I'll do is I put a big pot. I, I didn't get a big pot out. Um, I've got it in my sink. Um, I just get a big pot and put it on my stove. And I will just put in, um, I'll fill it about halfway up with water. And I'll just dump a couple of cups of instant coffee in that water and turn it up, get it to a boil, and then turn it off. Okay, turn, get it to a boil and turn it off. Once it's hot, then I'll throw in my all of the fabrics that I have ripped and torn. I just dump them in the pan and let them sit for several hours, okay? Now, once they cool, I'll take them out. Let's just pretend. Let's pretend that this is the pot that I'm working on. <laughs> this is my pot, all right? After all my fabric is in there soaking, um, Let's get over where we can see a little better. I just get it out after it's cooled, obviously. I pull them out and I just wring them, squeeze them, get all of that extra moisture out of them that I can, okay? And while I'm thinking about it, I do need to turn my oven on because we are gonna do actually do some baking here in a minute, baking some fabric. And then I get a cookie sheet, okay? This is my wet, dripping, coffee-dipped fabric, okay? We're pretending. <laughs> I just spread it out on a cookie sheet, okay? I spread it out. Now, it will be heavy. It will be wet, dripping. Yes, okay? Just spread it out on there. I'm going to turn my oven on to the lowest temp setting that it has. Now, my oven, that is 200, okay? Um, 
you, some people I've seen people do 250, 225. Um, I just, for me, I just like to set it on the lowest that it is. It may take a little bit longer, but I feel a little bit safer knowing that the temperature is not so hot. And your fabric can burn, it can scorch, it can get burnt marks on it. Uh, and sometimes that may be a look that you're going for. And if so, that's okay. <laughs> that's okay. Um, but you'll, you'll, you'll learn how to do it. Do a small batch at first to kind of get the feel of it. And then once you get the gist of it, you're good to go. Then you can kind of modify and see how your oven temp works and whatnot. I will tell you, if you, I wouldn't put in like a giant heaping mound of fabric on your baking sheet, okay? For one, you're going to have areas that are going to get way crisper and way more dry than the others because it's not going to have an even airflow through it, okay? I'll also tell you that sometimes if you have a convection bake setting on your oven, you may use that because it keeps the air turning more regularly. And I, I seem to, to do better with that. Okay. Um, and so I would go thinner rather than a heavier load. Okay. So put this on. These are drenching wet. Okay. We're pretending here. Putting it in my oven at 200 for about five minutes. Okay, five minutes, I'm gonna pull it out and I'm gonna toss it, okay, toss it. Now, it's probably not gonna be as hot at 200. You'll probably be fine if you want to use some tongs, okay, and toss it, all right? Toss it around, put it back in the oven for five more minutes. You're gonna keep repeating that five minute, those five minute intervals and tossing until your fabric feels uh, crunchy. Okay, crunchy or dry, crispy, uh, any of those adjectives. I didn't know we were going to have a grammar lesson today, did you? <laughs> um, any of that, it, it, then you'll know you're finished, okay? Um, and then you just set it aside and let it cool. Now, I will say, once I get my batches done, like if I have different kind of fabrics, if I may have a red batch, I may have a, a black uh, homespun batch, what I like to store them in is just some gallon bags, okay? I'll take all of the same kind of material, or sometimes I just kind of color code my bags. Like, this might be all like black and cream colored fabrics. I might ha I have another bag that's all just red tones. I have another bag that's all just strictly uh, like neutrals, like the muslin material, okay? So I squeeze the air out of it, zip it up. And what you can do, you can put these on little, um, I don't know what they're called, like little uh, pinch hangers, like little pant hangers. Pinch them on that and you can store them in a closet on, on a um, tension rod or whatever in your craft space and you have that your your color coded fabric strips handy at your fingertips whenever you need them. Okay, that's that's how I do it. All right. Um, now, when I do that coffee staining in a big pot, sometimes I don't add my cinnamon because like I said, that cinnamon will flake off. So if I'm just coffee staining, um, fabric in that way, I leave the cinnamon out, but I still include the vanilla, okay? Um, and, I, and I don't do any real strict measurements on that. I just kind of dump it in a pot, <laughs> make a big, big batch. Um, I usually do that all in one day and have lots of fabrics to use over the, you know, over the next several months, right? That way you don't have to do it as often. Okay, so let me show you how I do my little, my little grubby jars. Um, my little grubby jars, and I don't have one handy because we had, um, we had, we had some, we auctioned, not auctioned, we had a live sale, uh, with some of those a couple of weeks ago, um, and I sold all of them. So what I did for that, I want to show you how I did that. Um, those little jars have a little topper and do I have anything? Let me show you this one right here. Like, sort of like this jar, it has a little topper. Now this one is cheesecloth, um, word of caution here. If you coffee gr if coffee stain your cheesecloth, I don't ever put my cheesecloth in the oven. I let it air dry, okay? Uh, for me, I just feel like this is more likely to burn without me catching it. So I'm always nervous to put my, my cheesecloth in the oven. I just let it air dry. Okay, but for my little grubby jars, I like to use little muslin, um, where did my bag go? Little muslin uh, fabric toppers, okay? And let me show you, I'm, I've made a batch of these and I do the same thing. I store these in little port baggies 
and then I have them ready whenever I'm ready to make a batch of those little mini grub jars. I just pull out my bag and use it. Um, you know, I have all of these ready to go. So I'm gonna show you how to make a batch of these. Oh gracious, I forgot my son made a pizza in the oven yesterday and some of the cheese dripped off in the oven. So I was starting to smell like this burning smell. <laughs> I was about thinking, oh, we're going to go up in flames on camera. <laughs> oh, thank you, Miss Sheila. Um, so what I did, where'd that go? I cut out a template, a circle template. Now, once you kind of use like the same jars, like some of you might use like the same kind of spaghetti sauce jars, or I'm all the time telling you how I save my jars. I can't throw them away. So a lot of times you might use like the same you know, product, like whether it's spaghetti sauce, Alfredo sauce, pizza sauce, whatever. You might have some of the same size jars that you find yourself using repetitively. So you can cut one template and you can use it over and over. So what I did, I kind of figured out what size I wanted to use for most of my jar projects. And I made a template out of cardstock. It's not a perfect circle. Like if I was like being, you know, completely honest, I should have took it, taken like a compass. <laughs> and drawn it uh, so perfectly, but it's not. It's just a template, it works fine. And so what I do, I take, this is muslin fabric, you guys, not muslim, muslin with an N at the end, okay? So if you're ever looking for it, I don't want you to get embarrassed if you call it the wrong thing, <laughs> because it kind of sounds like muslin <laughs> if, if you're not knowing what it is. It's muslin, it's just a basic woven cotton fabric. It's really inexpensive, and um, I, get it, I get mine at Hobby Lobby, and I like the texture. There's different uh, sort of like densities or textures. I don't know what the proper word of it is, but I just like this one from Hobby Lobby. That's all I know how to tell you. <laughs> It's thicker. It has a little bit of a thickness to it, um, and it's rigid. It's not flimsy like some that I've, I've grabbed at other craft supply stores. So anyway, I fold it, fold it, fold it, fold it. And you see what I've done? <laughs> I fold it into different layers, and you can see I've already cut out some of these. I've cut it out a, a, a template. I made a big batch of these. I made some bigger circles and some smaller circles. And if I cut it all um, on these layers, I get like, I make one cut and get like multiple, multiple sheets. So let me show you this real quick. Um, and I'm going to put this on my cutting board here. We're doing good on time, you guys. We're getting a lot done today. Um, so I put that down on my cutting uh, mat and I take this template, okay? And I put it right down. And what I do, you can take like a uh, fabric pen, whatever you use. I use a basic ink pen. We don't do anything fancy around here. Okay, I give you the shortcut, so we do it simple. <laughs> um, I have a fabric pen, but I think I actually broke it. So, and whenever you need a fabric pen, sometimes you just can't find it. So, I'm just using a basic ink pen. This is kind of like one of those gel pens, and it works really good on fabric, which is why I use it. So, I'm putting that down. Hey, Miss Susie Lee from Bellina. It does. It looks like a snowman. <laughs> Uh, I'm putting that down on top of my layers of fabric right there, okay? Now, all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna trace around the edge with my gel pen, okay? Yes, it's gonna leave marks. Yes, I'm okay with that <laughs> because it's not gonna show. And even if it does, it's only on this top one and it's, it's not gonna show. I've done kazoodles of these and it's never been a problem. Um, so, but you do you, okay? Now I get one of these rotary cutters because I can cut like lickety split and have it done, right? Um, oh, cute, how are you? You're so sweet. Um, I know Miss Pat, hey, you and I have talked. We've we've been talking about getting our, our, <laughs> our craft supplies in order around here, right? I've been forced to do so. We've put our house in the market, you guys. We were for sale sign in the yard. I gotta get organized. <laughs> so yes, I know exactly how that goes. And once you get organized, then it's even worse trying to find things, you know? It's like, oh, you know. All right, anyway, put it on my cutting mat and I'm just gonna take this rotary cutter. This is a Friskers, is that right? Something, yeah, Friskers. Rotary cutter, it's sort of like a pizza cutter, but it's for fabric. And this is a great way if you can't keep your fabric scissors out of like everybody's hands in your house, get one of these. Because, you know, when somebody needs scissors, they're not going to think to grab this. <laughs> hey, Miss Jojo, how are you, sweet lady? Uh, nowhere far, Miss Susie Lee. Nowhere far. Nowhere far. We're still staying in Kentucky. We're not going far. Um, just about 
20 minutes away from where we're at now. Um, we're we're going to use this. And this is super sharp, so be careful. All right, so all I'm going to do now is I'm going to, you know what? Sometimes I like to leave that template on there because it kind of gives me a little edge to roll around. Okay, so I'm just going to take that rotary cutter, keeping my hands and fingers out of the way. This thing, this, this rotary cutter, like it's, it's, um, it's big dog here, like, because it will cut through, I don't know how many layers I have here, probably eight. It cuts through layers like nobody's business. And, um, I'm just going to, if I kind of, I'll, I'll kind of tug on it and see if it doesn't go through all the way, I just go right over it again. I'm not worried about jagged edges because we know imperfections are welcomed when it comes to primitive crafts anyway. With me anyway, they are. I don't know about you guys, but no perfection around here. Now it's gonna make, it's gonna make a fool out of me because I'm on live. <laughs> it's getting there. Um, just keep trucking. Don't give up on it. Kind of tug on it and see where it's still grabbing. See, I'm already getting some clearance right there. Let me show you. It's starting to pull away, so I know I'm getting through all those layers. This is way easier than cutting 10 circles individually, you guys. It just is. It is, it is. So I am going to keep going over that. I think think now that I've got a good start, I can take that template off. Yeah, we're getting there. Just keep on going. Oop. There we go. Close the blade on it. Okay. Well, you get the gist. I'm not... Okay. It's saying, ha ha, I know you're on camera. We're not going to cooperate. <laughs> it knows I'm trying to be in a hurry too. All right. You get the gist, right? So I'm going to pull. No, I'm not because if I come back to this later, I'll never get them lined up the right way. So let's just go ahead and do it. Go ahead and do it. We're getting there. Couple more little spots. Well, this little side over here is being cranky. Almost. All right. Did we get it? Did we get it? I think we got it. <sighs> okay. Now that seemed like a lot of trouble, but still yet. If I wasn't in a hurry, I probably would have been doing it a little bit better. Good morning, Miss Ashley. How are you? Hey, Miss Yvette. So look, I've got a whole stack of circles. How many? Oh gosh, let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Holy cow, 11, 12, 13, 14, I think there's one stuck together. So 15 circles, <laughs> you guys. Like, wow. So like, that's how, that's how you do it. That's how you do it. And I could still get, you know, several more out of that and then even use some of the scraps um, later. So that's how I make quick work out of that. Okay, let's set that over. Now let me show you next what we're gonna do here. Let me slide this out of the way. Um, what I do, I take like a real shallow pan, okay? I just got a cake plate here, all right? A baking pan, whatever. And I take my coffee grunge. Good morning, Miss Deborah. How are you? Hey, Miss Janice. Um, <laughs> looks like holy cheese now. You're right. <laughs> Y'all are so fun. Oh, it's warm, so there's a little bit of pressure that built up under there. Now, this is the batch of coffee grunge that we made just a few minutes ago. If you miss that, you'll have to go back and catch the beginning of this. Showed you how to mix this together. I gave it a good shake. See, it's all frothy and foamy. 
So we're like, we're drinking like, uh, I don't know, I don't drink coffee, but you guys, what, what are some of those drinks that have all the, the foam at the top of them? I don't even know. I'm gonna pour this, not all of it, but just some, into a shallow baking dish, okay? All right, doesn't get any easier than that. <laughs> ah, thank you, thank you so much. All right, now I probably will need more than that, but you get the gist. Um, you know, I told you we don't get things right here. I'm just gonna grab a fork, <laughs> and I'm just gonna start putting these little slivers. Uh oh, that was a folded piece that didn't quite go. I'm gonna take these in there, and I'm just gonna start laying them in there. Now you'll see. You kind of have to let that coffee from over, okay? It's not gonna roll over. You kind of kind of take your fork and mash it down in there. So I probably need a little bit more coffee in there. All right, see what we're doing there? Um, now if, there we go, that works a little better. I, I, I don't wanna pour a whole lot in here just yet because I don't need a whole lot for what I'm doing today. Um, but I wanted you to get the gist of if you make a big batch, you might want it a little bit deeper, okay? So, what I'm going to do, um, uh, thank you, Miss Carol. Let's tilt this down a little bit. I'm going to take these pieces out, okay? Whoop. You want to make sure that you get the coffee grunge all over your pieces. See, like right here, it hasn't soaked on there. Throw it back in there. Make sure that it's coating, Okay. Uh, there's still a little spot there. Sometimes that fabric sort of has like a, something like, um, I don't know, it just has a tendency to not want to absorb sometimes. So you kind of have to work, you have to dab it, kind of get it to soak on there. There we go. That's what we have right there, okay? Now I'm going to kind of drip off the excess and I'm going to lay it flat on my baking sheet, okay? I'm going to do that with all of these pieces. And then once I get them all spread out, I'm gonna put this in my oven. Uh, my oven, my lowest temp setting is, what did I say, 200. So I'm gonna put it in there and I'm gonna set a timer for five minutes. And I'm gonna check it in five minutes and I'll flip these, okay? Um, I probably should have put my oven on convection bake setting. I like using that better, but I didn't think about doing that. We might have to switch that. And let me rinse my hands because this does get messy if I go start touching everything. Um, okay, let me set this out of the way because I can knock that over. All right, so here's what we have. We have this on the baking sheet. I'm going to slide this in the oven, okay? I would fill up my whole sheet the best I can. I, you can even overlap them some and still get away with it, okay? So hang tight. Let's put this in the oven. You guys are sitting on top of my stove top. So in the oven it goes. And let's set the timer. You guys, don't ever forget to set your timer. <laughs> Fabric will burn. It will burn, okay, in a hurry. So while we're waiting for that, I'm going to show you how I do my little mini grub jars real quick. Um, and I need, I need a little plate or something. Let's get one of these little cheap plastic plates. I'm going to put some instant coffee on my plate. Okay, and I'm gonna sprinkle in a little bit of cinnamon. Okay, and kind of give that a little bit of a stir. I'm gonna use the end of my paintbrush here. Nothing fancy, okay? Nothing fancy at all. Now, I have some homemade, uh, homemade Mod Podge. <laughs> Wow, that was loud, wasn't it? Homemade Mod Podge. You guys were almost at 600. This is awesome. Uh, homemade Mod Podge. I just have some school glue mixed in with some cinnamon and instant coffee already in here. I put it in a pickle jar. You guys see my elastic pickle jar? <laughs> I'm telling you, I use these jars like crazy. So I've just mixed that in there, and all I'm going to do is take a real thin brush. We're making the mini grub jars. And I just want to put a real thin coating of that on my jar. Now, you may have a tendency to want to go heavy with that application of the, the Mod Podge. Don't do that. <laughs> um, 
Oh my goodness, I have somebody in my backyard. I think it's my neighbor looking for her cat. I was hearing somebody talking out there and I thought, oh my gosh, she's here. <laughs> uh, put a real thin layer on this. Thin, 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 you guys, okay? Thin at first. That's why I always like to use this little thin brush. See how thin that is? And that way it doesn't put too much on there. Now, you can go all the way up around the rim. I, I'm not gonna need to. I'm not gonna need to for this, okay? Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this jar while the Mod Podge is still wet, okay? And I'm gonna roll it in the coffee and cinnamon. Roll it. And while I'm rolling, I'm gonna smash, smash it into that coffee and cinnamon, okay? And then even do the bottom, roll it all the way around. And if you have an empty spot, just turn it back around and do the same thing till it's completely coated. Uh, you don't wanna see any of that Mod Podge underneath, okay? All right, there we go. Now, we're gonna let this sit, okay? We're gonna sit it upside down. I like to spread out like a, a, a sheet of freezer paper or something like that and let it dry, okay? It's gonna dry, some of it will get a little bit shiny because that instant coffee is gonna dissolve. It's gonna dissolve. <laughs> and when it starts to do that, it's gonna look like it's melting, which essentially it, it kind of is. Uh, it's gonna look like it's gonna melt because that moisture from the Mod Podge is gonna interact with the instant coffee and give you sort of this glossy look. If you guys are familiar with like, um, primitive like stoneware, crocs and things like that, it's gonna kind of give you a faux look of that, okay? Now, once this dries, if it does not get completely glossy, you're gonna do this Mod Podge layer one more time. It's If it still looks powdery, okay? And even if it does, I still might go ahead and do this again. So let me show you. Do you see right, ooh, right there? Right there. See where my paintbrush is? It's starting to get a little bit glossy. That's what we want to happen, okay? I'm gonna go ahead and show you what I would do next because we've got just a few more minutes um, before our next creator comes up. I'm gonna just dab this on real thin. So we're sort of making a Mod Podge coffee cinnamon Mod Podge sandwich. <laughs> we're gonna dab that all on and it's gonna look really nasty. Look really nasty, and someone who has not done this before, they're gonna think, "What is this lady doing? She's out of her mind." But promise me, trust the process. Promise me that you'll try it and you'll trust the process. You'll see. Once you do this and get all of that powdery look uh, covered, it's gonna melt into this wonderful look, and. It will kind of seep, it will kind of weep, and it will kind of drip. So you do want to set these on a layer of like freezer paper while they are kind of, you know, marrying together, okay? There's my, my beeper for my fabric. We're going to let this sit upside down on freezer paper, okay? How long? Depends on the dryness of your house, okay? Probably at least a day or two, okay? And I'll peep at this fabric in just a second. But once you let it sit, okay, it's going to look and it's going to harden and it's going to look like this. So let me show you this crop that I have on my stovetop. Look at this. <laughs> this is the real thing. I keep like my kitchen utensils in it, but I, I like to use this, you know, for like jars and such. But there you go. You kind of get a foam, a faux crock look, okay? So real quick, these fabric squares that I would put on here, I put it right on the top, not squares, I said fabric squares, they're fabric circles. Um, my fabric circles, that's what I use on top of my jars, okay, that we're fixing to pull out of the oven right here that I've showed you. Guys, we're baking these, okay? So let me show you. These have been in for five minutes. They're still really wet. All I'm gonna do is just flip them, okay? And put them back in for five more minutes and keep repeating until they get dry. Okay, once they get finished, they will be crispy, okay? That's what you want. So you can put this on one of your jars, tie it with a little fabric strip, 
and apply a little bit of coffee grunge around the rim and you've got an adorable little project that you can tuck in little spaces like this okay um and that's kind of what i like to do you can use them on little bitty tiny jars you know the little circles um big jars whatever okay that's how i like to make my little mini grubs and I'm just going to use these little baby food jars. I have a buku of them. <laughs> I'm going to do them all up and I'll have a huge batch. So this is perfect for those of you that are makers and like to do craft shows or sell online. Um, you can make a big batch um, all at one time. You guys, thank you so much for joining me today. I hope this helped you out. I'll go back through the comments today and answer any questions that I've missed today. But we crammed a lot in today, you guys. Thank you so much for joining me. We have coffee and cocoa themed crafts all day today over in the Craft on the Clock group today. And if you miss it today, you can go to that group and search for the hashtag coffee and cocoa, all together one word, and you'll see all of the replays later on. Okay, you guys, enjoy the day. Have an amazing weekend, and I'll see you again soon. Bye, guys.